ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير واشهد ان واشهد ان سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه بلغ الرساله وادى الامانه ونصح الامه وكشف الله به الغم وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى اتاه اليقين فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى اله واصحابه ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين يقول الله تعالى في كتابه العزيز بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ونعوذ بالله تعالى من النار ثم اما بعد we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we glorify him we thank him we send our peace and blessings on his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when it comes to the salah for almost every uh, fard prayer we do there is sunnah that we pray before there's a sunnah we pray before and there's a sunnah we pray after and so we have the sunnah before which we call sunnah qabliya the one that we pray before the salah and then we have the sunnah after called the sunnah ba'diya which we pray after the salah and this is true for majority of the five obligatory salawat. And the scholars have mentioned that the wisdoms, there are wisdoms behind Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislating these sunnahs before and after the salah. And from the amongst the wisdoms that they mention is that the sunnah qabliya, the sunnah that you pray before the salah, it prepares you for the fard. It prepares you for the obligatory salah. It gets you in the salah mode. You can think of it as warm-ups. You know, when you have to play a match, what do you do before you play in the match? You warm up. So these uh, sunnah, before the salah, they are warm-ups, getting you in the salah mode, getting you concentrated, so that when you enter into the fard, you are ready, you are prepared. And as for the sunnah that comes after, then they mention that the wisdom of the sunnah coming after is that it fixes the deficiencies that you have in the fard. And of course, there's going to be deficiencies. When, when all, all of us, we pray, none of us have a perfect salah. There are deficiencies, l- l- lack of concentration, and so, so on. So the sunnahs that come after, they fix these deficiencies in the salah. So this, re- this regards to the salah. And the scholars have mentioned that very similar to the salah and the sunnah before the salah, and the sunnah after the salah is for the month of Ramadan. And that would be the month before the month of Ramadan, Sha'ban. It's like the sunnah qabliya. It is like the sunnah that we pray before the salah. The month of Sha'ban is the month that we use to get ready for the month of Ramadan. And then the month after Ramadan, Shawwal, is the month that we make up for any deficiencies in our fasting in the month of Ramadan. And this is done in the six days that we fast, voluntary six days of Shawwal. So the month of Sha'ban, which we are in right now, and we are heading towards the middle of Sha'ban, this is like the sunnah that we pray before the fard, getting us into the mode of salah. The month of Sha'ban should get us in the mode of fasting for the month of Ramadan. And so this is the month to start preparing for the month of Ramadan. And actually, it's actually late to start preparing now for the month of Ramadan. Although, if you prepare now, it's good. Better late than never. But preparation for the month of Ramadan actually should have begun even before, in the month of Rajab. 
And our scholars have mentioned several statements about this connection between Rajab, Sha'ban, and Ramadan. One of the scholars, he said that Ramadan, or Rajab, Shahru, uh, az, uh, az That Rajab, this is the month of planting. This is the month of planting and uh, sowing the seeds. Wa Sha'ban, Shahru, saqi And Sha'ban, this is the month of watering, irrigation. Wa Ramadan, Shahru, Al-Hasad. And Ramadan is the month of harvesting. This is where you reap what you have sowed. This is where you reap the benefits of your preparation before the month of Ramadan, starting from Rajab. Uh, in another uh, statement from, from one of the scholars, he said, Method of Shahri Rajab, Method of Reeh. The example of the month of Rajab is like the wind. Wa Method of Sha'ban, Method of Ghaim. And the month of Sha'ban is like the rain clouds. And Wa Method of Ramadan, Method of Qatar. And the month of Ramadan is like the rain. So before the rain can come, you need the wind to bring the clouds together and then the clouds come together and then they become rain clouds and then it starts to rain so this is the example of the month of Rajab and then the month of Sha'ban and then in the month of Ramadan so we should have already been preparing and even before Rajab the Sahaba radiallahu anhum they used to make dua six months before Ramadan came asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh Allah allow us to reach the month of Ramadan so even now it's very late but nonetheless it is still time there's still time for us to start preparing for the month of Ramadan so that it does not come and we are unprepared and preparation is something very important uh, in the life of a believer we need to always be prepared uh, for the task at hand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, speaks about in the Quran the battle of Tabuk and this is a, a battle that required a lot of preparation a lot of preparation they were going to a very far uh, area which required uh, preparation in wealth and riding animals and everything else that's needed and a number of people remained behind because they did not prepare because they did not prepare and many of them most of them were munafiqeen most of them were hypocrites who had no intention of going out and they offered their excuses when they when Rasulullah came back from the expedition they all came offering their excuses and these excuses were not accepted and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about those who offered excuses that if they wanted If they had really intended to go out Then they would have made the preparations If you were serious about going out You would have made the preparations If you were serious about benefiting And having success in the month of Ramadan Then you need to make the preparations And when we talk about preparations We are mainly talking about these spiritual preparations The, 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 the material preparations These are important as well but the spiritual preparation, this is what is even more important. And so we, as individuals, we have to be prepared for the month of Ramadan. Just like as organizations, we are preparing. Right? This masjid is preparing. We are preparing the, uh, the food, organizing the food, how the food is going to be distributed, who's going to serve on which day and provide on which day. We are organizing the salah, the salah timings, security for the masjid. So the masjid and the organization is preparing. And so likewise, individuals also must be preparing. But we're not talking about material preparation. This is important. Knowing what you're going to eat for suhoor, knowing what you're going to eat for iftar, knowing what time you have to leave for the masjid, knowing uh, where, where, you're going, where, where you're going to go for iftar and so on. These are important as well. You have to prepare that. But more importantly is the spiritual preparation. What am I going to accomplish in the month of Ramadan? How much Quran am I, am I going to read in the month of Ramadan? Ramadan how much am I going to give in sadaqah in the month of Ramadan how many times am I going to come to the masjid in the month of Ramadan these are all questions we need to ask ourselves now and have answers prepared if you want to complete the entire Quran in the month of Ramadan you can't wait until the 25th 26th day and then start reciting you have to have a plan reciting this amount every single day so we need to ask these questions to prepare ourselves for the month of Ramadan so that when we enter the month of Ramadan, it will be easy. And so inshallah, we want to give some advice in this khutbah on how to prepare ourselves for the month of Ramadan. First advice is we should not assume that we are going to make and meet the month of Ramadan. As we know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can take our souls at any time. Kullu nafsin da'iqatul maut. Every soul shall taste death. And Allah says in another verse in the Quran, وَمَا تَدْرِي نَسْتُمْ بِأَيِّ أَرْضٍ تَمُوتْ that no soul knows even where they will die. Much less when, they don't even know where they will die. So death can come at any time. 
and no one should assume that they are going to meet and enter into the month of Ramadan. And we know many people who were with us last year and they are no longer with us this year. And even in the last few days, in the last few weeks, we know people who have passed away and they did not meet the month of Ramadan. So we should be making dua from now until the month of Ramadan comes for Allah to allow us to reach the month of Ramadan. Allahumma balighna Ramadan. Oh Allah, allow us to meet and reach the month of Ramadan. And even if we meet and we reach the month of Ramadan, don't assume that you're going to reach it in good health. It's possible that you might reach it in a state where you might not be able to fast, or you might not be able to pray the Qiyam and the Taraweeh, or you might not be able to do the things that you intended to do. So also make dua for you to reach the month of Ramadan, and make dua for you to reach the month of Ramadan with, with health, with health and strength, so that you can maximize in the month of Ramadan. Second advice is do not delay good deeds until Ramadan. This is a trick and a plot of the shaitan. The shaitan comes and he tells you, wait until the month of Ramadan. Don't start praying yet. Don't come to the masjid yet. When Ramadan comes, then you can start coming to the masjid. Don't give out your charity yet. Wait until Ramadan, then give the charity. Don't fast yet. Wait until Ramadan comes and start fasting. And the shaitan comes with these tricks to get you to delay and delay and delay. And he does similar with our lives. Wait until you, you get older, then you can make hajj. Wait until you get older, then you can start praying five times a day. Wait until you get older, and then this, and then this, and then th and that. These are all tricks from the shaitan. Do not delay good deeds. If you want to do good deeds, do it now. Don't wait until Ramadan comes. And this will be beneficial in the long run. Because if you start to do good deeds now, you are prepared and you already have gotten into that habit. Right? You get into the habit of doing good deeds. When you get into the month of Ramadan, it's easy. You are already praying. You don't find it burdensome in Ramadan. because You're already praying. You're already coming to the masjid. You are, you've already practiced fasting. This is also something good to do, to practice fasting in the month of Sha'ban. So if you do good deeds now, then this prepares you and makes you enter into Ramadan easier. And we see it oftentimes, this happens every year, the month of Ramadan comes, and the first few days is a lot of energy and a lot of excitement. But then what happens after a few days, maybe after the first five, ten days, then there is a drastic dip. There is a big dip in activity, in energy. And the reason for this is that a person is not used to doing good deeds. They're not used to doing all these deeds, and so they burn out. There is a burnout after maybe five or ten days. Because you're not used to, just like a person, you're not used to running. So you start to run, and then you get tired after. Uh, a few minutes. So if you don't pace yourself now and start doing the good deeds now, then when the month of Ramadan comes, the, 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 adrenaline, the adrenaline at the beginning of Ramadan is going to push you to maybe the first few days. After that, then we see what happens. Many people start to burn out and they lose that energy. So start to do the good deeds now. Do not delay. Whatever you intend to do in Ramadan, start doing it now. So that when Ramadan comes, you are ready and prepared. And from the things that you can do, in preparation for the month of Ramadan is fasting. Rasulullah fasted a lot in the month of Ramadan, uh, the month of Sha'ban. As Aisha radiallahu anha says, وَلَمْ أَرَهُ صَائِمًا مِنْ شَهْرٍ قَطْ أَكْثَرَ مِنْ سِيَامِهِ مِنْ شَعْبَان I did not see him fasting in any other month than the fasting that he did in the month of Sha'ban. كَانَ يَسُومُ شَعْبَان كُلَّهُ كَانَ يَسُومُ شَعْبَان إِلَّا قَلِيلًا He used to fast almost the entire month of Sha'ban except for a few days. So this is a very good thing to do as well. One or two practice fast. Get into the, in, into the habit of fasting. It, get, get back used to fasting in the month of Sha'ban. If you can do more, do more. At least one or two practice fast will be beneficial to prepare for the month of Ramadan. However, when it comes to fasting in the month of Sha'ban, be careful not to fast towards the very end of Sha'ban to the point where you are joining it with the fast of Ramadan. Rasulullah SAW says in hadith, لا تقدموا رمضان بشهر بصوم يوم ولا يومين. Do not precede Ramadan with the fasting of one or two days. So one or two days before Ramadan comes in, don't fast on those days, unless you already have a habit of fasting. إلا أن يوافق ذلك صوما كان يصومه أحدكم. Except for a person who is already in the habit of fasting, you already fast. You're used to fasting Mondays and Thursdays, or you're used to fasting certain days then you can continue that because this person is already in a habit of fasting. But for those who don't have that habit of fasting, then leave off the final one or two days 
before the month of Ramadan so that we distinguish the fasting of Sha'ban and the, the voluntary fast from the obligatory fast in Ramadan. And according to some of the scholars, once the half of Sha'ban has come, then you should also refrain from fasting. As it comes in the hadith, إِذَنْ تَصَفَ Sha'ban فَلَا تَصُومُ When half of the month of Sha'ban has passed, then refrain from fasting. And the scholars have mentioned that this also applies to the one who is not used to fasting. But the one who already is habitually fasting, and they're already used to fasting, and they already have set days which they fast, then they can continue on even after that. So if we are able to get in a few days of fasting, preparation for Ramadan, then inshallah, this is something good to do. From also from the advices we can give, preparing for the month of Ramadan is to have that joy and happiness at the coming of Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa says in the Quran, قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ Say, in the, in the grace and bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His mercy, in that, let them rejoice. In the grace and bounties and mercies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let the believers rejoice. So, some people, they dread fasting or they dread the month of Ramadan. They have to wake up early. They have to go the entire day thirsty, hungry. Some people look at it this way, in a negative way and they are dreading the month of Ramadan. This is not the attitude of the believer. Say, in the fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in his mercy, in his bounties, and his, in his mercy, the believer should rejoice, should be happy that the month of Ramadan is coming, a month where you will be, inshallah, forgiven of your sins, where you can attain multiple rewards. This is what you should be happy about. And whatever difficulties that you will go through in the month of Ramadan, this is nothing compared to the mercy and the rewards that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in store for the believers. Inshallah, if anybody could come up, uh, there is uh, <coughs> a lot of people coming in today. If you could move up as much as possible, make space for those who are coming in. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Hamdan Kathiran, Tayyiban, Mubarakan Fi. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. From amongst the things that we should make sure to do in the month of Ramadan at the very beginning is starting off the month of Ramadan correctly, starting it off right, starting it off with barakah and blessings, and avoiding things that take away from the barakah. And this concept of starting things off right is something emphasized in our religion. When we eat, what do we say at the beginning? Bismillah. So that we could put barakah in our food and so that the shaitan does not share in our meal. So we start off our food. And we start off our drink with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we start off marriage, Rasulullah used to say to the married couple, he used to say to them, Barakallahu lak, wa baraka alayk, wa jama'a baynukuma fi khayr. May Allah bless you, put his blessings in you and on you, and join you together in all that is good. Starting off with blessings. So anything that we do, we should make sure to start it off correctly. And with blessings, and avoid the things that take away from the barakah. And starting off something with incorrect intentions or starting off something with devoid of barakah is a formula for the entire rest of whatever comes after to be removed from barakah also. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about in the, in the Quran a masjid that was built and this masjid was built by hypocrites and the foundation of this masjid was built not on taqwa but it was based on deception and hypocrisy. وَالَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا مَسْجِدًا ضِرَارًا وَكُفْرًا وَتَفْرِيقًا بَيْنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَإِرْصَادًا لِمَنْ حَارَ الله وَرَسُولًا Those who took the masjid ضِرَارًا to harm the believers and to spy on the believers and to cause fitna. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about this masjid لَا تَقُمْ فِيهِ أَبَدًا Don't ever pray in this masjid. Because this masjid was not started off with taqwa. لَمَسْجِدٌ أُسِّسَ عَلَى تَقْوَى أَحَقُوا أَن يَقُومَ فِيه with the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the masjid that has more right for you to stand and pray in. As for that structure that was started off with bad intentions, then this 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi don't ever pray in this structure. And he says in the next verse, أَفَمَنْ أَسَسَ بُنْيَانَهُ عَلَى تَقْوَى مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرِضْوَانٌ خَيْرٌ وَرِضْوَانٍ خَيْرٌ أَمْ مَنْ أَسَسَ بُنْيَانَهُ عَلَى شَفَا جُرُ فِنْهَارُ فَنْهَارَ بِهِ فِي نَارِ جَهَنَّمُ Is the one who laid the foundation of his building on righteousness, on taqwa, and fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and seeking his pleasure, better or the one who laid foundation of his building on the edge of a bank that collapses, and it collapses with him into the fire of hell. So we want to start off the month of Ramadan in good terms. And so that means avoiding any of the common argumentation and bickering that happens every single year at the month of Ramadan. And we all know what happens when there is a fighting over the moon sighting and who's starting this day and who's starting that day. And people start off the month of Ramadan on a bad note. They start off fighting with each other, quarreling with each other debating with each other. All these things can take away from the barakah. So we have to make sure that we start off the month right. Don't start off quarreling and fighting and bickering amongst each other. Of course, we would like for all the Muslims to unite and start off the month of Ramadan on the same day and finish the month of Ramadan on the same day. This is something everyone uh, would like. But we have differences. And these, all these differences go back to scholarly differences. And they are backed by scholarly interpretations of when the month of Ramadan begins, whether it is to be local or whether to be international and so on. So these go back to scholarly differences. And these scholarly differences go back a thousand plus years. We're not going to solve them in one night. And so we have to accept the reality, which is that there may be differing on when the month of Ramadan begins. For each person, what your job is to follow your community and leave that in the hands of the community and those who are making the decisions and don't get involved in the argumentation and the, and the bickering that we see happens every single year in person or on the internet and causes people to lose the barakah in the, in the beginning of the month of Ramadan. And it is possible, it is possible that Muslims, different communities, they start off on different days, but there's harmony between them and they maintain brotherhood and they maintain good terms. And maybe that is better than they start off the same day but they are fighting and bickering amongst each other. Maybe that is the case, Allahu Ta'ala A'la. So, it is very important that we start off the month of Ramadan right, we don't involve in bickering and argumentation, and we focus on our ibadah, focus on our ibadah and what we are planning to accomplish in the month of Ramadan. Another piece of advice is that not only should we pay attention to ourselves, but also to our families. Also to our families. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala says in the Quran, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قُوْ أَنفُسَكُمْ وَأَهْلِيكُمْ نَارًا O you who believe, save yourselves and save your families from the fire of Jahannam. وَقُودُهَا النَّاسُ وَالْحِجَارَةِ The fire in which the fuel is men and stones. So don't only focus on yourself but also your family. Make sure your family is praying. Make sure they are fasting. Make sure they are fulfilling their obligations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises Prophet Ismail in the Quran. وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِسْمَعِيلِ إِنَّهُ كَانَ صَادِقَ الْوَعْدِ وَكَانَ رَسُولَ النَّبِيَّ And mentioned in the book, the Prophet Ismail. He was a person who fulfilled his promises. And he was a prophet and a messenger. وَكَانَ يَأْمُرُ أَهْلَهُ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَالزَّكَاةِ وَكَانَ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِ مَرْضِيَّ And he was a person who would command his family to salah and to zakah. And he was in, within his, in the sight of his Lord one who is earning the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to make sure that not only ourselves, but we also focus on our family and make sure our family is also prepared for the month of Ramadan. And lastly, from now until Ramadan begins, let us get into the habit of uh, making dua for us to reach the month of Ramadan, for us to benefit from the month of Ramadan, for us to accomplish whatever we are aiming to accomplish. And as we mentioned, you need to prepare you need to have a plan. If you want to finish the Quran, if you want to do anything, you have to have a plan and be prepared. Or else, what's going to happen is you are not going to achieve what you want to achieve. If you want to give sadaqah, think about how you're going to give the sadaqah, where you're going to distribute it, to which organizations, which masajid, and so on. You have to be prepared. Or else, if you're not prepared, then you're not going to be able to accomplish whatever you are intending to accomplish. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to allow us to reach the month of Ramadan. Allahumma balighna Ramadan. Allahumma balighna Ramadan. Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab 
وشعبان وبلغنا رمضان ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إن كنا من الظالمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار اللهم اغفر المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم فرج فرج وانصر إخواننا في فلسطين اللهم انصر إخواننا في فلسطين اللهم انصر إخواننا في فلسطين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداء الدين اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين في مشارق الأرض ومغاربها اللهم انصرهم وفرج عنهم يا كريم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون قيموا الصلاة